is Rusty Walker with the Hill Phoenix Learning Center. Today what we want to do is we're going to change out a condenser fan assembly. And helping me with this is going to be Joe hey, and Dean from Hill Phoenix. And they're going to be assisting me in going ahead and removing this fan and the assembly that goes with it. So let's go ahead and get this stuff done. One of the things that we have to do before we shut the fans off at the condenser, we have to go ahead and pump down the rack. So we go through the process of shutting the liquid line, leaving the receiver, pumping the rack down. Once the rack is pumped down and the compressor is shut off, then reach over, de-energize the breakers for in each individual compressor, then go over to the controller and lock the condenser fans out so that we don't have the zero to 10 volt signal coming from the controller to the fan motors. Once we've taken care of all that, now we can get ready to change the fan by going ahead and first de-energizing the power to the fans, and then we'll go ahead and change the whole assembly. Ding. Simply just turning off the breaker or the disconnecting means before we start is going to be what we want to do. All right, let's go ahead and get started on the motor, Dean. Now that we've gone ahead and killed the power at the disconnecting means, the next thing we have to do is take the motor cover off so that we can both disconnect the wires so that we can pull the assembly off. But before we go ahead and disconnect the motor, notice how Dean's using his camera to take a picture of the proper wiring and the way the wires are set. So this way, once he gets the motor out and he puts the new motor in, he'll be able to wire it exactly like the old motor was taken out. Now, what we want to do is verify that we did de-energize the um, power to the motor at the disconnecting means. So first thing we want to do is take our mo meter. We want to check voltage phase to phase. This is a three phase motor. And then we want to check power phase to ground on all three legs. This way it verifies and this saves us from getting shocked or anybody getting hurt. All right, now that we've de-energized power and we've checked it, we can start disconnecting the wires and then we'll pull out the fan motor itself. Now that the fan motor has been disconnected electrically, now what we have to do is begin to move the, the retaining bolts out of the fan shroud itself. Now, we want to be careful not to take the bolts out and allow the fan shroud to drop suddenly onto the, uh, the Venturi itself. So one trick that we can do is as you take one of the bolts out, put a, hole, put a screwdriver in one of the holes until we get all of the holes out throughout all the way around the fan assembly. Then we can easily and safely pick the fan shroud, the motor, and the blade themselves out of the Venturi. Remember, when lifting the fan motor assembly, that this has some weight to it. This is very heavy. And so we need to lift properly with our legs, and we need to take care when we set this into the condenser to not allow the fan and the shroud to fall into the condenser coil. Now, as they lower this in there, they line the holes up carefully put their screwdrivers back in to hold it up in position until they can get one screw into the hole. Then once they're able to get the one hole started, they'll be able to remove the screwdrivers and just go about their work. And from this point forward, to reassemble the fan shroud and motor back into the Venturi is going to be the opposite of the way we pulled it out. So we'll put the bolts in first. We'll go ahead and tighten them in. Once we get those done, we'll pull the electrical cable over. We'll connect the three-phase power. Also, we'll connect the 0 to 10 volt control power to the motor as well. And then once everything is secure and tightened and powers uh, apply or powers connected to the motor, then we'll go ahead and go back to the breaker and apply power go to the controller and uh, put the, the condenser fan back into the system to allow the zero to 10 volt signal to come back from the controller to the motor to drive it at the proper speed. About when we're up there, I don't know. 
Remember earlier when Dean took a picture of the, how the wires were wired up and what colors went where, now he'll go ahead when he's reassembling, take that same photo and allow him to wire the fan motor up properly, same colors to the same terminals. This is a very good uh, troubleshooting trick. I don't like that. I want to thank Joe and Dean for showing us the proper way to change out a condenser fan motor. I hope if you ever have to change out a condenser fan motor that this video helps you. For the Learning Center, my name is Rusty Walker and thanks for watching.